Okay, we had a deal. Now it's your turn to ask questions. So we'd like to open the floor to questions. Uh, yes. First of all, thank you, Dr. Karandang, for a beautiful talk this afternoon. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Second, advance happy birthday on the 24th of November. Uh, I'm Dr. Andy Tan, an officer of the Parents' Council here in Loyola School. Okay, I have a son, third year, taking up computer science here in College of so Science and Engineering. And that's the main reason why it's his fault. That's why I'm here in Ateneo. Okay, so uh, my, my question goes like this. Uh, I'm a widower, and then he's the only son. Okay, it's not an excuse. But I have to come over here because he does not even know where Ateneo is when he got finished his high school. Okay, so I have to accompany here, I have to watch over him, not being a helicopter father. But take note, since three years old, until now he's 19, he spent most of his life in a school setup. Okay, five or six days a week. About 16 to 20 weeks a semester. So basically, he spent more time, of course, more at home, but more pleasant at school. Okay, but typical, Atenista, pardon me. When he goes home, the first question I ask, we stay in Binondo, right in front of 168. Imagine the traffic. Yeah, sorry, so, I didn't get that. The first question you ask is? The, the, the question is, uh, doctor, is something like, the core value is the family. Okay. So, so it's not necessarily only at home. Okay. Because see, my son is getting more values in school. Okay. 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 So being following your six C's. Yes. So no question about it. He's in one of the best institutions. I didn't regret why I why I enrolled him here after passing foreign and local schools. He said mm -hmm. the next one's list. He chose it. Yeah. I chose it here. I'm happy even up to today. Okay. But unfortunately, whenever he comes home, how's your day? And the consistent answer is, uh uh, nothing much, nothing less. <laughs> I think people can relate. <laughs> Parents counsel. Okay? Yes. So being discernful, okay, with all integrity, with all the love and mindfulness, okay, adjusting, give and take, okay? So affirm, positive affirmation. It's part of growing up. He's the mm -hmm. only child. He's suggesting to the environment. Supportive. So far, so good. Okay? But how I wish... The core value is not only applicable at home, but mm -hmm. also in the school. Mm -hmm. see, there was a time he came home so sad. Oh, I'm not great conscious as long as you learn your lesson and you apply it. But pa, Ateneo has a game tomorrow. If I watch, I have plus five points. <laughs> so, pardon me, but I told him, what in the hell has the UAAP game has to do with your education? So how do I become discernful? How can I be detached from such a trivial matter? Uh -huh. Now, I don't want it to become so big. Okay. okay? Following all your teachings. Yes. All, your, yes. all those beautiful thoughts. Yes. May I suggest that in the school, we come up with something. Not only, <laughs> not only expecting that you do your things, your parents at home, your core values, etc., etc. I remember the so same orientation. Okay? Mm -hmm. Leave your parents at home. That's rule number one. Leave your parents at home. Okay. 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 And then, me naman in the parents' council, I tell my co-parents, let's leave our kids in school. The <laughs> school we trust, the school we know it's good. But sometimes when my son comes home, again, pa, Ateneo lost. I lost my five plus points. Thank you, po. <laughs> okay, see. So the question is... <laughs> Sorry, the question is again, na it's all more parenting at home. Okay. But also, how about parenting in school? school? Okay. Again, more time spent here okay. than at home. Okay. Eight hours of study, four hours of reviewing, mm -hmm. four hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. And then professors will email in Facebook by 11 p.m. Your deadline is 2 a.m. Submit your paper. <laughs> How can I be discernful with such an arrangement? It's all okay. not problems at home. 
It's more of the environment such as school. And again, my question, ma'am, how can we parents adjust to the school? Oh, that's the question. How can... Not, take note, it's not the student adjusting to the school anymore. How are we parents cope up with the stress produced by the school? <laughs> <laughs> I think people are laughing and clapping because they are kind of relating to your question. And so, you know, this is quite pertinent. As the president of the Parents' Council, for the yeah. last few weeks, okay? Yeah. We have all the norms, we have all the rules, we have the student handbook. Short shorts are not allowed. Okay? Uh, it's what? Again, sorry, what's the last sentence? Short shorts, short pants in school uh. is not allowed in the student handbook, okay? But uh. go around the environment. So parents are complaining to the council. Why is the school allowing it? I see, okay. How can I be detached? How can I have my integrity of telling my co-parents it's in the handbook, page 92? <laughs> okay, I think you have a big job in front of you. <laughs> First, um, how integrity is only at home. Why is it only at home? Yeah, I think it starts at home, but when the child has absorbed it at home, he has it. He has it. But I also believe that there must be a real correspondence and communication between the school and the parent. So that will probably be initiated by you <laughs> to, to, to put a, a structure, not really uh, seriously, to put a structure that uh, ensures the communication between the parents and the school, even if they are already in college. That's one, okay? Number two, how do I, this, how do I, what is the word to use? Detach, okay? I think developmentally, we know that at a certain age, when the child is an adolescent, one of the tasks of the parent is to let go and not to parent that a 15-year-old the way you parent an 8-year-old. In other words, we have to change our parenting as the child develops and gets more critical thinking and more mature. We also grow with our children. So it's also not easy, but it is our most difficult task, probably of all, as a parent, I know, is to let go. But if you know that you have practiced, or you have, you have, as you said, have that integrity, the discipline, etc., then it is easier for you to trust your child to be discerning, to be able to let go. And then when he asks you a question, it comes from him, then you answer the question, but you are, there is a basic trust already that you have developed towards your child, that your child, whatever the situation is, will act in a way that is congruent with the core values he has learned at home. Before, I also questioned that, is everything like when you're young? But you know, as I got older, and I, I'm 50 years in psychology, <laughs> reading, practicing, living, thinking, raising kids, taking care of many other kids who are not my own, and parents and grandparents, I really all now believe and see that the core training at home still affects the adult even at 70 in my marital uh, sessions. There are certain characteristics or certain core uh, patterns or characteristics of the person that can change because of awareness, but certain very basic uh, aspects of the personality are there. Do a study on that. It's very interesting because at 72, I can observe that they know what they should not do, but there are certain things they cannot do because they never were able to get it 
So in parenting inside out, one of the basic uh, principles there is uh, attachment. A basic task in parenting is a young child must have a secure attachment to have a secure base so the child is secure, goes out and um, goes into an adventure, comes back, moves that he has a secure attachment, which is the parent. And this is now also in studies related to criminality and so on and so forth, empathy, etc. how attachment early in life, secure attachment base, is essential in the child's uh, solid sense of self. It's a very, um, it's an old thing, but it's a new thing. It's a very interesting uh, um, statement no? that, uh, that's coming out now in the newer uh, books on developmental and psych and parenting. There is a remnant. There's still, you will still see something a part of the person that remains to be that part of the person, even if she has learned every other thing from school. From it. But I believe that your task now, <laughs> something has to be done where two things. One is, how do you practice letting go and trusting your child more? And number two, how do you forge a structure where the connection and communication an exchange between parents and school is yeah, ensured. I think you can do it. <laughs> I think you're the person who will do it, okay? Because <laughs> you notice it and you have the position also to be able to do it. But that's a good point. The congruence, no? Between home and school, okay? I think I saw a hand, yes. Oh, there. I'm sorry. Good. Okay. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. Uh, my no. name is Isa. Liza. I, Isa. Isa. Yes. And I'm a fan of yours. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we practice, I practice personally relationship and parenting coaching oh, okay. um, and some counseling, but on a psycho spiritual approach because I'm trained in CEFAM, not okay. in the Department of Psych. Yes. Um, and a lot, really, we see a lot of uh, problems or concerns or challenges really do stem out. Even problems in school, um, you can trace certain problems, a lot of the problems at home. And those who are excelling also get a lot. You can see, uh, well, uh, I think um, Maribel Junisha and uh, Dr. Queen Alichua did a study on yes. excelling students on private school and public school mm -hmm. and what practices they do at home that yes. are working. And some, a lot work. of them are in your presentation. Mm -hmm. And so the, it's, it really boils down to the home, but I agree with Dr. Tan on the uh, school-home uh, partnership. And I think choosing the right school and maybe the DepEd can also look into the school systems. But as far as home is concerned, and I'm glad we're bringing this up now, and I can only hope there was um, so much audience and even televised what you talked about, because we really need this as a country. Um, and especially next year will be the year of the family, for the, and there's a synod looking into the family. And I, I, I have a personal strong, uh, I, and I like to forward, Parang a parenting license. <laughs> they should be somehow have some qualifications. <laughs> I, yes, or training. Minimum. Or training, right. Which right, right marrying right. people would need a license, although that also lacks practice, lacks <laughs> enough preparation, and some go around it even. But you know, doctors who, who deal with patients have to be licensed. Uh, what else? Teachers have to be licensed. <laughs> Engineers, you know, Bridges can crumble has to be licensed. But so ma many parents who can ruin lives, even if there are parents who are trying to be better parents to their own children, will have to grow up. Their children would have to grow up with children who were not parented properly, and therefore it's affecting the whole system. So is there yes. a way we can forward? Really not. We don't want to take away the child from a biological parent because she's not prepared. But is there a way that we can forward, you know, some sort of sanctioning that they, you know, driver's license, you have to have a seminar <laughs> if you're you going to take it, right? 
I'm sorry, if you make a mistake, <laughs> really force them to have a seminar or, or a course of some sort. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think we could think about putting a parenting course in, in the curriculum in high school. I mean, you know, gradually, maybe later part of grade school, in the, in the level that the, the, the appropriate developmental level uh, stage, I mean, uh, put in that way, and then high school, and then college. I really believe it. Uh, actually, right now, uh, I'm finishing a, a book uh, requested by DepEd on uh, what is called personal development of grade 11 and 12. Remember, we already now have grade 11 and 12. And then that, that book, uh, maybe it's the first time it's going to, it talks about how the 11, because for 11 and 12 lang ito eh, will be uh, able to be aware of who am I, what are the influences in my life, my family, etc. How do I relate to other people, uh, you know, that kind of thing. Because I think that's really not in the curriculum, is it? Yet. Not yet. So, well, keep advocating. I mean... <laughs> get a mass of people to uh, advocate for it. But DepEd is becoming more open to it now, I think. So maybe there will be a time when there will be some kind of developmental psych is one, maybe child psychology, there are, but it's not really parenting, eh? oh, which I think, I really believe is necessary in the curriculum. So it's guaranteed that at least people have become aware it's not just, you know, to have a child and nothing else. Okay. Yes. Hi, there's Maybe we have Bobo. time for one more question. Okay, Boboy. Hi, there's a baby. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon. My name is Marielle Uykienko. Hi. Hi, uh, so I'm a mom of three, actually. Cute. Um, I work with parents through my company. Uh, we mm. hold parenting classes. Okay. Um, you know, what to do with your baby. Because <laughs> a baby is not an object and not a toy. So we do, you know, and mm. uh, we are also advocates of positive discipline. Okay. Talk parenting classes on that. So mm -hmm. uh, what you said earlier re really resonated with me and validated what we're teaching. Um, but we usually get questions from parents who belong to the Christian groups about okay. spanking. Na parang, um, but we don't do it in anger. Yun, we spank out of love. We're not angry when we spank. So yun, we're kind of stumped on how to answer those, <laughs> those kinds of questions. And they sometimes get mad at us kasi na parang, what? Parang not, you're, you're not advocating spanking. Parang so, mm, yun, Yeah, the controversy. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. It's a long thing about spanking. <laughs> okay. Um, let me talk about spanking, because sometimes uh, some of you were spanked, some of us were not spanked, and we're still okay. That's what we say, no? Yeah. Uh, what the first? How do you spank? Okay, that's one question. When you you spank when you're angry, and you spank, you may spank when you're not angry in a way that doesn't really hurt. Maybe. Uh, personally, I don't believe in spanking, okay? I wasn't spanked, and my three boys, whom I believe to have integrity and assertiveness and, and uh, have achieved so much, have not been spanked, okay? That's just my personal thing. But some people, if you will spank anyway, I think there's a proper way to spank and an improper way to spank. When you will, if you will spank, First, I think you have to warn the child. Okay, if you're going to do that again one more time, I will spank you. So that's not out of anger. Because first, when, when parents say, I'm, I'm not angry, I'm not so sure about that. Okay, but anyway, I kind of doubt it. But if you are not angry, if you want to spank without the anger, because I always say that when you spank a child, it's not the hurt in the butt that lingers in the child's mind, but the face that, want, that has the urge to kill, which is your face, <laughs> okay? So what sticks in the mind of the child is the anger in the face, not the hurt in the butt, 
that goes away. Okay, so if you want to spank and, and you really have to spank, one is warn the child, spank in a part of the body that is not, not the face, not, not you know, not uh, and then uh, explain why you're spanking and uh, give the meaning of the behavior of the child if you're going to spank anyway. But it's very difficult for me to answer why we spank because I don't believe in it. And I think, for example, when one, one time when I told one, my son said, mom, can I do, the, I forgot what it was, can I go to this place? And it was very clear that there's a rule. Then I said to him, come. And he come closer, and then I whispered to him in a very low voice, son, absolutely not. And he said, okay, mom. The whisper was much more powerful than if I had spanked him or shouted at him. Because when he saw my face, absolutely not. Parang, you know already, you know it's, and with, it was so effective. So I believe that there are, because spanking also can lead to a child spanking another child. Parang modeling eh, no? So that's another thing. So maybe you can uh, answer in a personal way by giving examples, and, and also giving examples of disciplining without hurting and being effective in doing so. So, so they can be more convinced about it. Because the thing that, okay, ako pinalo nilagay ako sa sako, gano'n na, pero okay pa rin ako. Inloob-loob ko, siguro, mas okay ka kung hindi ka nilagay sa sako. Hindi lang natin alam. Parang, parang hindi ka masyadong okay eh. So, sabi nung kahapon nung isang father, sabi ko, well, I said, maybe, you may be even more okay. If that wasn't done to you, what do you think? <laughs> so anyway, the principle is that one of respect. The principle that is also at work is you don't have to hurt a person in order to teach anything. That for me is what I believe in. Thank you.